the Saucony Endorphin Speed 4, and the Adidas Adizero Boston 12. Two of the top and most capable performance trainers or super trainers, but determining which one's right for you is going to come down to a few key factors. A couple of things to note about this video before we get into it. The Saucony Endorphin Speed 4 is a new shoe as of April 2024 when this video is being recorded. But the Boston 12 is actually a shoe from 2023. This is a shoe from last year. Arguably, this was the top performance trainer or super trainer of 2023 on most people's lists. Now, I don't typically like to compare a new generation shoe with an older generation shoe, but these two shoes are really in the same category. And I'm getting a lot of comments asking which one is better between these two shoes. So I am going to compare the Speed 4 and the Boston 12. But it is very likely that if you're watching this video later in 2024, a Boston 13 has come out. Now, we have seen leaks and details about all the 2024 Adidas Adi Zero releases, except for the Boston. There's been nothing leaked about the Boston. The assumption is that there will be a Boston 13, but we've not seen anything about it yet. So I don't really know, which is another reason I'm comparing these sh two shoes, just in case we don't get another Boston or a direct upgrade to the Boston, because there are a couple other Adi Zero shoes that look like they could fill the role of what the Boston has always been. Now, if we do get a Boston 13, I will remake this video and do a comparison between the Speed 4 and the Boston 13, because that's going to be very clear. If we get something from Adidas that replaces the Boston, then I'll do a comparison of that. But as it stands right now in April 2024, these are the two shoes that I think a lot of people are trying to gauge. How do they compare? And if I have the Boston 12, is it worth getting the Speed 4? Or if I've always liked the Endorphin Speed series, should I begin looking at the Boston? And I think the answer to this really comes down to a couple key factors. Some of it's about how you run and some of it is about what your expectation is for a shoe like this. As with all my Versus videos, let's start with the specs. So looking at the Saucony Endorphin Speed 4, we have 38 mil of foam in the heel, 30 mil of foam in the forefoot, giving you an eight mil drop. Now I use Running Warehouse's specs for all of my videos and these are from Running Warehouse. The weight comes in at 8.3 ounces or 235 grams, and that's for the standard US men's size nine that everyone uses. Now the Endorphin Speed 4 is a full power run PB, which is a PBEX PIBA midsole, the same uh, formula of PIBA that Nike uses for Zoom X, and it has a winged nylon plate in it. Now the wings are on both the medial and lateral side. It also has Saucony's speed roll technology and geometry, which is essentially the rocker or the toe spring in the plate in the front of the shoe. It's how you roll off the toe. And the Endorphin Speed 4 definitely is a shoe that will roll you off of the toe quite well. Moving to the Adidas Adi Zero Boston 12, we have 35 mil of foam in the heel, 28.5 mil of foam in the forefoot, giving you a six and a half mil drop. Again, these are the specs from Running Warehouse, not from Adidas. I trust Running Warehouse because they measure all shoes consistently across brands. So I usually find that their measurements are the true measurements. Now the weight for the Boston 12 is 9.1 ounces or 258 grams. It is a little heavier, but it's also a bit of a denser shoe too. But on foot, I wouldn't necessarily say that you feel that. And again, that weight is for the standard US men's size nine reference size that everyone uses. Now in the Boston 12, we have a mixed Light Strike Pro and Light Strike 2.0 midsole. So from the image above, the cream colored and colored foam in the forefoot is Light Strike Pro. That's Adidas's premier racing foam currently. And then the rest of the foam, particularly in the heel and then wrapping under the forefoot is Light Strike 2.0, which is a EVA based training foam that Adidas uses in a lot of their trainers. The Boston 12 is also a plated shoe, but since it's an Adidas Adi Zero shoe, it's got the uh, rods. So it has um, glass fiber energy rods 2.0 system and a lateral wing. So there's a wing on the outside of the shoe. There is nothing on the medial or the inside of the shoe. And the rods are glass fiber. So there's no carbon fiber rods here. The Speed 4 has a nylon plate. The Boston 12 has a glass fiber or fiberglass rods. 
and toe rocker. Looking at the weights of my actual pairs of these two shoes, starting with the Saucony Endorphin Speed 4, I have 239 grams in the left, 237 grams in the right. Essentially, they're very close. Two gram difference is really nothing. In my pair of uh, Boston 12s, I get 254 grams in the left, 255.5 in the right. Again, very close. And I think that speaks to the build quality of both of these shoes. Even though I do have some criticisms of the Speed 4's quality, I think overall the shoe is well put together and I think Saucony has made a decent product. And I think the differences in the weights between uh, each shoe, left and right, I think really speak to that. Looking at the outsoles and the dimensions of the contact patch of both these shoes, this is where we begin to see some significant differences between these shoes. With the Endorphin Speed 4, we have 11.5 centimeters across the widest point of the forefoot, 6.8 centimeters through the waist of the shoe, and 9.8 centimeters in the heel. In the Boston 12, we have 11.8 centimeters in the forefoot, we have 7.4 centimeters in the waist of the shoe, and 8.2 in the heel. Now, the difference here is that the Saucony, I think, is actually much more uh, designed for heel strikers and midfoot strikers. There's a much more emphasis on the medial and lateral heel flares of the Speed 4, and I think the way the wings in the plate actually work are really there to help heel strikers and midfoot strikers get the most out of that shoe. Whereas in the Boston 12, like the rest of the Audi Zero range, I think it's really optimized around a four foot strike. As you can see, the heel is very narrow, but there is a massive contact patch of rubber and material in the forefoot of this shoe. And I think that really speaks to how both these shoes are designed for. Saucony shoes typically favor heel strikers and midfoot strikers, and the Audi Zero range typically favors four foot strikers. And looking at rubber coverage on the outsoles, they're both actually very good. I actually do quite like the Speed 4's uh, four-foot piece of rubber. Again, it's a latticed piece of rubber. It gives you some flex in there. You have good compliance to the ground, and it's very durable. And for heel striking, you have the uh, two pieces of rubber in the heel with a lot of exposed power on PB foam. However, power on PB foam is very durable, and for heel striking, you shouldn't have any real issue there. Now, in the Boston 12, it's gonna be hard to beat this one because we have this big, beautiful uh, piece of continental rubber in the forefoot, which is just one of the best wearing and feeling rubber outsoles that I can remember in recent memory. The outsole of the Boston 12 is spectacular. And if you're a forefoot striker, you will really notice that. But for heel strikers and midfoot strikers, there still is ample rubber coverage. And I would say the heel in the Boston 12, as far as coverage, is probably a little bit better and a little bit more durable than even the Speed 4. Now talking about the fit and feel of these shoes, which is really where the big difference is for really any comparison of a shoe, I've been very harsh on this shoe. I have described this upper as very sloppy, very vague fitting, very baggy, very cheap feeling, and I'm standing by that. Though running in the shoe, and I now have over 100 kilometers in this shoe, I've not actually had any issues with it. I just wish it felt nicer. Again, I think the best way of describing the fit of the shoe is very vague. The heel counter is very straight. There isn't a lot of padding back here. I'm not a runner who has heel slip issues. I don't complain about heel slip in really any shoe, but I do feel that I don't have the tightest lockdown in the heel of this shoe. Again, I've never gotten heel slip in this shoe. I'm just aware that it's not really that tight back there. The tongue in this shoe is the one thing I do like about this upper, and it's a gusseted tongue. It's the anchors of the gusset. Typically, the gusset of a tongue would anchor in the midfoot. This one actually anchors in the heel. It anchors about right here. So this tongue and this gusset that's anchoring here is, I think, what's helping to give this shoe a decent amount of lockdown, even though the materials and what Saucony is using this shoe for the upper are not very good. Now moving to the Boston 12, I actually quite like this upper. Now Adidas's Adi Zero uppers of 2023 could be very harsh. They used a very sort of rigid plastic mesh for a lot of them, but this upper is a mix between that material and a softer material, something like what you would find in the Adi Zero SL series, though not as padded, that I think works really well. It's a nice compliant upper to the foot um, it doesn't have a lot of hot spots. I think the overlays in here are pretty well done, and I think the material selections are really well done. Now, like all Audi Zero shoes from 2023, if you had problems with one for heel slip, you're probably going to have problems with this. It is a fairly rigid heel counter, 
but there's not a lot of padding back here. It's still the Audi Zero kind of pad here, pad here, no pad in the middle. So if you have heel slip issues in Audi Zero shoes, this one's going to be no different. And um, I think it is problematic for some people because this is a little stiffer back here. But again, I don't have problems with heel slip and I've had zero problems with heel slip in this shoe. This shoe actually fits really well for me. The tongue is gusseted. It's this felt like floppy material that's got a little padding down the middle that it Adidas used in a lot of Audi Zero shoes last year. Honestly, the tongue is pretty forgettable. It is gusseted, and the anchor of the gusset actually runs quite a bit of the foot. It's pretty much in here, which again, I think aids in the lockdown. The eyelet chain is fairly straightforward, fairly simple, and I think it does a really good job, job locking the foot down. And the toe box in this shoe, I consider this a fairly wide toe box. I think it uses the same last as the Adios Pro 3 and the Adios 8 from last year. So to me, this is a wide forefoot, though if you have a wide foot, probably not the right one for you, but it is wider than I think a lot of other Adidas shoes have been. And there's very good uh, volume in the toe box. I think overall, this is a great upper. I think it's a great training upper. I think it's a great upper that mixes training with faster work. And I think it's the right upper for this type of shoe. Now, the other primary difference between these two shoes is the ride. This is a very soft, very flexible ride. Power Run PB foam in this shoe is compressive and soft, though it's not the type of foam that you sink into. It's not like Nike Zoom X, but it is a foam that when you contact the ground, you will feel it compress. And the ride of this shoe is the two layers of Power Run PB sandwiching the nylon plate in this shoe kind of work together. So no matter where you're striking, whether it's heel, midfoot, or forefoot strike, you're landing you're compressing this white layer of foam which is compressing enough softening that initial strike that engages the plate the plate firms the shoe up and then you have this big chunk of power and pb above the plate that will continue the compression and also the speed roll technology which is the toe spring of the plate will be rolling you forward again if you land it on heel midfoot or forefoot by this point you're rolling forward and it's going to feel like a very soft, very compressive shoe that's rolling you forward. It's a very nice ride. I think it probably suits a lot of runners really well, and it has quite a bit of range. The shoe, while it doesn't fit great, and I think it could be a lot better as far as the upper, the midsole of this shoe and the ride of this shoe is spectacular. Moving to the Boston 12, this is a very different ride. Now, this is a much stiffer shoe. The glass fiber rods in this shoe are much stiffer than the uh, nylon plate that's in the Speed 4. Additionally, Light Strike Pro, which is the predominant foam in this shoe, is a firmer foam. So this shoe actually, while it does have a little flex in it, it's much stiffer. And on the run, you do notice how much stiffer this shoe is. You get the compression and the sort of response of Light Strike Pro, which is a very high resiliency foam. It's a race foam, so it has very quick energy return. It's spring-like in the way it, it returns energy. And the roll of this foot of the forefoot of the shoe, the toe rocker in the shoe, really gives you that feeling of falling forward in the shoe and rolling forward. Now the white foam that's under this foam is their Light Strike 2.0, their EVA foam, which is here to really slow down the shoe to kind of smooth out the Light Strike Pro. Because if this was a full Light Strike Pro midsole, this would be a lot to handle. It would, it would be a race shoe at that point. But I think putting the EVA here, especially in the forefoot of this shoe, because this shoe really is designed to optimize around forefoot strikes, um, really smooths it down and brings this shoe into a really good training range. Now, this is a stiffer shoe, and it's a stiffer shoe that will give you that more traditional falling forward with the toe rocker feeling. And you will get a little bit of pop, a little bit of that spring out because of the rods, um, much more than you do from the uh, Speed 4. But this shoe is very contrasting to Speed 4. It's firmer, it's much more drastic in how it goes forward, but it gets to the same end. It's still a very fast performance trainer or super trainer. So what's the verdict here? Which one of these two shoes do I prefer? Well. I think it's pretty obvious, but the Boston 12. I prefer this shoe in every possible way. The fit, the feel, the finish, the upper material, the foam, the rods, the way the shoe rides. There isn't a single thing that I prefer the Speed 4 over this shoe. 
this shoe wins across the board for me as far as um, every spec, everything that I want out of a shoe of this category. Now that's not to say that I don't like running in the shoe and I don't enjoy the shoe and I don't see that this shoe is a good shoe. I think this shoe is a very valid performance trainer or super trainer, but picking which one of these two shoes is going to work for you, I think comes down to what are your expectations for a shoe like this? And to answer that, let's look at really what I think the common expectations are of a performance trainer or super trainer and what types of running it should be able to do. Now, to me, this category of shoe should be able to do these four types of running. Easy running, which is about 60 seconds per kilometer or more, generally more off of race pace. Now I'm a marathoner, so race pace for me is marathon pace. Steady running, or sometimes people will call this aerobic running, sometimes tempo running. That's about 30 seconds-ish per kilometer off of race pace. Again, I'm a marathon or some marathon pace. Threshold running, which is race pace, though my actual marathon pace is a little bit below threshold, but somewhere in that range of actually doing, you know, that sort of race pace work. And then max effort running. This is intervals, reps, and probably racing, especially for someone like me who's a marathoner. If I'm going to go race a 5 or 10K, then um, that's going to be really max effort, kind of all out running. Now, if we take the uh, Endorphin Speed 4 and the Boston 12, and we put them on this scale, we can look at sort of what are the sweet spots in the range of each one of these shoes. So with the Speed 4, I think the Speed 4 works really well in here. Now, the red area is really the sweet spot of what I think this shoe does. And to me, the Speed 4, I think, real sweet spot is between steady and easy. I think the flexibility, the softer foam in that shoe, I think it works really well for that kind of 30, 35 seconds, maybe down to 20 seconds off of a marathon pace. It does that type of running really, really, really well. Because of the softness of the foam and the flexibility of the plate, it also does easy running really, really well. It actually does easy or recovery running really well, which is the orange range going out of this chart. Though honestly, for that type of running, I'm gonna use a non-plated daily trainer for that stuff. But if I wanna grab the Speed 4 for that, it does it really well. Now, if we map the capabilities of the Boston 12 here, I think the Boston 12 sweet spot really is in that kind of between threshold and steady running, which frankly, for me, this category of shoe, if I want a shoe for this type of running, this is exactly where I want it to be. I want it to be right in the middle of this chart somewhere between my race pace and steady or aerobic slash tempo running. And to me, that is the sweet spot of the Boston. And that's why I prefer the Boston for this type of running. It's not that the Speed 4 can't do that. You see that the range goes in there. But once we get into threshold and especially above threshold, I think the softness and the flexibility of the Speed 4 kind of, to me, are its downfall. I want something that's a little bit stiffer, that's got a little bit more structure to it. And that's exactly what the Boston 12 is. But there's one other shoe that I think I'm going to start putting into this sort of categorization, and that is the Adidas Takumi Sen 10. Now, in my initial impressions review of the Takumi Sen 10, I'll put a link in the description, I talked about how much more versatile I feel the Takumi Sen 10 actually is. Now, the Takumi Sen is a race shoe. But because of the added versatility, because some of the changes in the Takumi Sen 10, specifically the Takumi Sen 10 and the Boston 12 now have the same glass fiber energy rods that go from heel to toe. Um, and I think that gives the Takumi Sen 10 much more versatility and I think is a valid shoe to put into this uh, categorization. So if we look at what the sweet spot of the Takumi Sen 10 is, I think that really is threshold, above threshold, and really max effort. If you're really doing intervals, reps, really racing 5, 10K, which is really what that shoe's designed to do, this is the optimal shoe. Like I said, the Speed 4 is a little too soft when I'm getting up into this range, and I think the Boston 12, there's just a little bit too much shoe. There's too much rocker, a little bit too much foam. I like this sort of simplicity, how much streamlined the Takumi Sen 10 is for that faster effort. It's a little bit lower to the ground. There's less rocker in it but it still is the same energy rod system. So I think it works really well for that. But I can take the Takumi Sen 10 through threshold into steady, and I've even done easy running. Now the type of easy running that I want any of these shoes to do is kind of that, you know, an easy warm up or cool down in a longer workout or the easy running between sets in a workout. Any of these shoes would do that really well. 
including the Takumi Sen, which is not something I would have ever said about the Takumi Sen 8 or 9. And because I already can see the comment that's going to be in this video, what about the Super Blast? Well, to me, the Super Blast and the Boston 12 are completely interchangeable. But the difference is what it comes down to what type of shoe you race in. Do you race in a low plate configuration, carbon plated shoe like a Vaporfly or a Metaspeed Edge Paris? Then you're probably like the Boston 12. Or do you race in a high plate configuration shoe like the Nike Alpha Fly or the Metaspeed Sky Paris? You're probably going to like the Super Blast. But again, the Super Blast and the Boston 12 pretty much do the exact same thing in the same way. Just it depends on the feel that you like in that shoe. So the performance trainer or super trainer that I think I'm going to be spending a lot of time in in 2024 is probably this shoe. And again, I'm shocked that I'm even including the Takumi Sen into this type of video. But to me, this is a shoe that does really more of what I want this category of shoe to do. It's again, not that this is a bad shoe. These two shoes, I think, work really well together. And if you go back and look at that sort of overlap, this does really well up into higher threshold. Once I get into max effort, this is a little bit better. But I do tend to prefer lower stack shoes. So this is one I'm going to be spending a lot of time in. Though I'm really curious what they do with the Boston 13 or possibly the shoes that are replacing this. And we've seen some leaks of a couple shoes that in hindsight, now that I think about it, may be the replacement for what the Boston has been. The tempo trainer or performance trainer to the carbon plated ratio option. Like I said at the beginning of the video, if there is a Boston 13 or whatever the replacement from Adidas will be, I will be coming back and doing this video and comparing the Endorphin Speed 4 to whatever that shoe is. Because I think it's going to be very valid and those will be the shoes that ultimately at the end of the year I will be comparing to one another. Not the Speed 4 to the Boston 12 because they're different generations of shoes. Thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you find this kind of content useful, consider subscribing. You'll see more content from me pop up in your feed. If not, drop a like on this video because it helps this channel continue to grow, which I always appreciate. And with that, I'll catch you in the next one.